Throughout history, kings, queens, emperors, and pharaohs, inheritors or conquerors of land and wealth, have often been found to have had inherent commonality. These individuals' legacies, often accompanied by a conviction that they were ordained by their god to their position of ultimate power in their world, or in some extreme cases, believing to be gods themselves. However, another peculiar trait of these once terrifyingly powerful leaders was a belief in immortality, not only of an afterlife, but one often accompanied by their most loyal of subject and beast, which they were particularly fond of. These convictions have, throughout history, resulted in tremendous efforts and financial sacrifices being funneled into the practice of preparation for this event with some rather extraordinary processes being undertaken solely for the purpose of biological preservation. And although the Egyptian mummification process, along with the many golden and otherwise created sarcophagi and death masks, are recognized worldwide, a little lesser yet no less visually striking practice, which created a series of what is now known as the Immortal Jade Warriors, can be found in China. Supposedly dated to just over 2,000 years old, yet perfectly crafted, incredibly preciously shaded jade gem suits of armor were made for their ancient emperors. These suits, indeed, practically immortal due to the fact that they are nearly solely created from a solid stone, an astonishing feat. There is a contradiction in the ideology, or possibly more accurately academic explanation, for the true purpose of these preservation practices. Within many of these burial techniques, there is seemingly a conflict of interest between spirit and body. For whatever reason, those who underwent Egyptian embalming, for example, are apparently believed, by whomever has explained these practices, that the kings and queens wanted their bodies to live on far beyond their death and passage into the underworld. Furthermore, in complete disarray, the question then becomes, were these practices actually an ancient attempt at what we now practice with cryogenic freezing? If the body were intended to be used within the afterlife, then firstly, why the curses often found inscribed above the sealed tombs? And why were the organs and brain often removed and perfectly stored separate from the body? Along with Egypt, why in other locations were favorite noblemen, loyal animals, entire chariots, or indeed entire terracotta armies left for these self-perceived gods on Earth? Were they, in reality, preparing for a form of reincarnation? Not within a spirit world, but an afterlife, one for the mortal body, one within the future? We find such hypotheses highly compelling.